Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Kent Tilly, and today I want to go over a video that just came out five days ago from CBC Marketplace where they went into some banks and tried to figure out if you were getting uh, good advice from the banks or they were trying to upsell you and misleading you and all of these other things. Uh, CBC did one of these nine years ago. Uh, not much has changed in the last nine years as far as their tactics are concerned. However, times are way harder now, so this is even more important than it was nine years ago. If you've been watching this channel at any point in time for the last eight and a half years, then you know that I don't exactly love the banks and what they're doing. So I'm going to watch it together with you guys. We'll cut out all the fat. Uh, but if you want to watch the whole video, maybe we'll link it below and just turn uh, monetization off so you don't have to go through any commercials because there's commercials on both ends. But we'll trim it down and uh, just get to the main parts and, uh, and we'll talk about it when I think we need to. The pressure to sell. We're encouraged to push our targets over clients inside Canada's big banks. It's not a customer service or advice driven environment. We go undercover to hear what's getting pushed. All this at a time when financial decisions really matter. And the big five made over $50 billion last year. Okay, so this is my first problem was, um, what happened during COVID to push up the bank's profits and, and you see they made over $50 billion last year and you know their record profits after uh, after everything happened with COVID. So the government started printing money to help us not go into you know financial ruin during the shutdown that COVID caused and that goes you know I mean to our lowest earners and as you watched, the flow of that money immediately, immediately went from the very bottom and just grew into crazy profits for the bank. The real estate boom that went on during that time was crazy. And all they did was they took that money into their own pockets and lent it out back to us. Uh, and then we get saddled with higher interest rates and now they get to keep their profits roughly the same lay off thousands of workers keep overcharging us for everything people have this like sort of ingrained trust built into the canadian banking system like they're doing good things for us but this changed a long time ago oh are the banks actually looking out for us or more interested in making a sale I want to see if you have any offers right now. Oh, sure. What kind of offers? Let's chat. Uh, all right. I've talked about this many times on the channel. was like, uh, instead of actually doing education about financial planning, what would happen is somebody with a product that was on our shelf that was an expert in that product would come in and basically teach us how to sell it. Uh, they all have like these sales boards and let everybody know how good or how crappy somebody is doing to kind of drive that loan protector insurance they absolutely love and then obviously on top of that credit card limit increases which were talked about was is the biggest thing that they do for sure no actual underwriting needs to go into credit card limit increases other than them just saying, well, this person's close to maxed out, let's give them an increase. Why can't we go into the bank and be like, you know, I've got this high credit card, but I've got income, I'm trying to pay it down. Can you give me a loan or a line of credit that I can transfer this balance to, cut up this credit card and pay, you know, half the interest rate? And every single time they say, absolutely not. At RBC, our tester goes in to deposit a hundred bucks, but then, you have a credit card limit increase for $8,000. They don't care that they're being seen in a, in a bad light. If you say, okay, well, I hate CIBC because they did this, they know that, you know, BMO is going to get that business. It, it, it's like they're one big one with five names. 
Mo. After our tester deposits her cash, she's pitched a checking account. There's no cost for that. So the only condition of the premium plan to have is maintain 6,000 inside the same account. Yeah, so there's no cost for that unless you have $6,000 just sitting in your checking account doing absolutely nothing. A lot of people can't keep that balance above 6,000. So they're eventually charged for the premium plan. The 30 bucks? Yes, I've seen it a lot. Every week they would release your results and display your name with what you sold. We obtain internal documents that show the sales credits BMO employees get for selling things like checking accounts, credit cards, and lines of credit. The more money the bank makes, the more credits the employee earns. So I don't really know what these sales credits m do at the end of the year, maybe bonus, but I've heard stories of like, okay, so it, it's also like based on a team. So uh, maybe a, an ex-bank employee can reach out and I'd love to ask you questions, even if it was like you blocking out your face, but like the sales credit board will show, okay, you know, Jimmy is just absolutely crushing it. He ruined this elderly lady's life and, and he got, you know, 1500 sales credits, but Susie actually felt bad. So save some money, didn't get those sales credits. And as a team, if you don't hit all of these proper numbers, then everybody's gonna be mad at Susie. So, you know, you're forced into thinking you're gonna lose your job if you're not selling enough as a teller, which I always thought a teller was just a service position. And what's worse, he says colleagues added products to customers' accounts without their knowledge. Many times. If you pay attention to any financial news reporting, there's some sort of lawsuit that's being settled by every bank all the time all the time but they don't hit the news because the banks are the biggest advertisers for the news so one thing that we were discussing yesterday whether you hate or love cbc not that's kind of beside the point but one good thing is about the cbc is no other you know news organization is going to do something like this because they're immediately going to be threatened with losing all their advertising revenue which becomes a problem. And I mean, that goes for the government as well. I know we don't trust the government right now. They're not really doing us any favors. So why do we trust a government run news organization? I understand. At TD, as our tester is depositing her money. You can sit with time with us. You're able to get a credit card. Oh. You don't have to go through a credit check. You don't have to look at income. So you qualify for a credit card, you don't even need an income check. The ideal situation is for a credit card to be given to somebody who then keeps a balance on it and can't pay it off. Uh, but of course the bank wants to sell people credit cards and of course the barrier to entry is going to be so low it's in the floor. Nothing at Scotiabank, but over at another BMO branch. Our tester is told she's eligible for a 20. Which is she must have had well they didn't even check i think all she said is she had fifty thousand coming in for with an inheritance and they're like you've been approved for a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit they might have run a credit check uh it's pretty surprising that they're giving they don't give out lines of credit very often anymore like that i couldn't walk into a bank today and be like let me show you the numbers. Let me show you how my business has been growing for eight years. Let me show you all of these things. Can you guys help me out? The only thing they'd say to me is, oh, we can give you a higher limit on your on your corporate credit card. You would recommend that? Yeah, I mean, it's not all the time we we'll have this kind of offer. This former Scotiabank senior financial advisor says he was pressured to sell too. We're there to sell and make money for the bank. So, I mean, I know that that's happening. I mean, what we're generally dealing with is those senior financial advisors and we see what they've sold and the advice that they're giving to their clients. And, and generally it has nothing to do with the advice. A lot of times they're not actually even allowed to give advice as far as tax planning or timing with CPP or OAS or, or anything of the nature. They're just there to sell mutual funds and we'll see in a little bit where uh, this 
CFP discusses the barrier to entry to be a financial advisor in the bank is so simple. Um, everybody that works at K4 has that at least, but the day they get it doesn't mean that I could ever send anybody uh, out in the wild and be like, go start giving advice because what people are paying us for is advice. Uh, not to sell something other than the planning advice for a cost, uh, which is totally transparent where they are not. Uh, you'll see they don't even understand how the fees work in a little bit, uh, and they're completely misleading with rates of return. You've got to put your ethics on the back burner, and you need to not be able to sleep at night if you're going to do it like that. And uh, that's what they're kind of forcing all these bank advisors to do. And one day I hope that all the bank advisors come to firms like mine and come to other firms and say, you know, this is a better place to hang my hat because we're trying to do the right things for people rather than just trying to increase the share price for our CEO so they can get a better bonus and we can get laid off. My mortgage rates are constantly going up and for my husband and I, it's just so hard for us to make those payments. I've had quite a few clients cry and you know, tell me about their hardship. I have had an increase of clients upset, you know, having to take money out of their children's RESPs. If they need to take money out, we have to do what we can to sort of stop it. So to be clear, <coughs> do you feel you're under pressure to get customers to make financial decisions that may not be in their best interest? 100%. You need money to pay bills and there's access to it, but it's in a mutual fund. No, get them a credit card. Then we'll make more money and still have the investments, but they'll be worse off. And she says there's proof. She secretly recorded a coaching session with her manager about pushing customers. When I hear you talking to them, it's almost like you think of them a lot. So that's why you don't want to put force on them. Because you're thinking about them, it kind of backfires for you in meeting your goal. Just a manager. So for me, I'm the owner. I'm the shareholder. I would never be like, make sure you sell them as much as you can, because this is a human to human business where we're trying to help people. How can you convince a manager to drink the Kool-Aid that much to tell the employees to forget about humans and just keep pushing those targets. What have they ingrained into these people to make them feel that that is right? We're heading back inside the banks, this time to test what kind of financial advice we get from folks beyond the tellers. If they ask you have some debt, credit card debt, about 17,000, telling advisors she wants to invest a $50,000 inheritance not true, but we're testing the advice we get. I'm excited First up, what do the advisors tell us to do about that credit card debt? Hello, uh, I'm just wondering if there's an advisor that I can meet with. Now, before this even starts, the only advice here is to first pay off the credit card debt. Scotiabank. You don't have to pay out all of it, but definitely pay out a portion. Yep, just pay oh, off just a, a portion. portion of Why? your debt. Why? That's the rest. Bad advice, says certified financial planner Sandy Martin. Hmm. There is no way that you can make 19.99% on your investment. It just won't happen. The advisor does not get paid to pay off the debt. You don't get any sales points. No, I don't get any points for that. Oh, Why would you? TD. You can do a minimum Lost payment. money. Minimum payment? At RBC, this advisor also tells us to just pay off some. For example, 7,000. Or ten thousand. Why? Or she suggests taking out a line of credit to pay it off. I personally do not think line of credit as a borrowing thing. What? You don't think of a line of credit as borrowing? What do you mean? Every single one of them. You see, you see how every single one, not one of them, said to pay the whole thing off. What? As for that inheritance, all the advisors recommend investing in mutual funds that earn them sales credits. They're not allowed to guarantee the returns on those investments, so will they? At CIBC, seems like it's a sure thing. 
the average interest you'll get at Okay, I like uh, this. The average interest you'll get at least 10%. Okay, for well, for one, now you already know that this guy doesn't know anything. Try and find me an investment that will return 10% interest. Find me one. Uh, the only way you're gonna get over 10% is if there's a lot of growth in your stock portfolio which is not interest income and it certainly isn't going to average above 10 percent every year just because last year a lot of the funds they have had good years does not mean that that's what's going to happen in the future and that is never what you should be telling anybody to expect that or selling somebody based on past returns it was very easy in the very beginning for me when I didn't know anything, when I was exactly like this guy, you pass a course that takes you two days to pass and then they say, go and talk to every single one of your family and friends about their money and get them to invest in these funds. And there's more. Financial advisors tell us they felt they had to sometimes cross the line just to sell those investments. The TD Insider recorded another manager telling her to snoop around a client's accounts. His words are read by someone else. See if the client has got cash sitting somewhere. This is why they have the biggest advantage over little guys like us is, is they get to see everything, right? So like, uh, and I know this has happened, you know, like this happens all the time. So if somebody gets an inheritance and that money comes into account, the bank already knows that the inheritance is transferring from one person to another. It's just like, get them in there and get that money. And we have a whole team of vultures that gets to see absolutely everything. They share information with one another. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's just the way it goes. As for the former Scotiabank advisor, his breaking point, the death of a client's husband. I mentioned this to my direct supervisor. The first question he asked me was, are we still getting their investments? That was the first thing he cared about. That, that's when it really hit me that there's no compassion at all. Uh, it, it's all about the numbers. I, I still have a really good buddy that uh, works at my old firm. And uh, at the same time in, in 2014, our wives got pregnant at the exact same time. Turned out their due dates were in February. And so we both kind of told our manager at the same time, yeah, our, you know, our wives are pregnant, you know, whatever, all of these things. And uh, he's like, when are they due? And we're like, oh, you know, February. And he says, instead of saying congratulations, he's like, that's during RSP season. So he's upset that we're not going to be as focused on selling in RSP season because we're having babies during RSP season. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Manager, that, uh, you know, we couldn't time our IVF. We've been trying for three years and paying tens of thousands of dollars to, to get pregnant. I'm really sorry that we didn't time it properly so that Leo uh, would be born outside of RSP season. I, I didn't mean to screw uh, your number's over so bad. Back on Hidden Camera, we're asking about the fees charged on those mutual funds. They're important because a typical fee of 2.5% could eat up almost half the value of your portfolio over 25 years. The only reason people don't care is because they don't actually see that coming off most of the time. Thank, you know, sweet baby Jesus that in January 1st of 2027, so only three years away, finally you're going to see a statement on January 1st that comes out that says exactly how much money you paid to the bank in the previous year. That's why we have a countdown clock on the website saying, I can't wait for this day where people actually get to see how much money they're being charged without being lied to because there's ways that they hide how much they're charging you. I'll check. What will advisors who have to sell mutual funds to hit targets tell us about the fees? At BMO, take it out, out of your returns. Yeah. 
The advisor incorrectly says the fees are only charged on any profit that $50,000 inheritance earns, not the nest egg it's. It's two and a half percent of the value. That's it, or whatever the MER is. Uh, so, you know, let's say for example, it was 2% and your return on paper was seven. That means the fund returned nine uh, and you just don't see it, it come out. Self. Just the return, so if the return was 5,000, it, it wouldn't be the 55,000 that they take it off. No, no, no. At TD, we're told not to worry about the fees. A lot of clients won't even notice because it's very insignificant. Yeah, super insignificant, like hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. Also told incorrectly, they're only charged on any profit. Will that 1.9% also be taken from the 50,000? Um, it, no, it's not taken out from your own principal. RBC gets it right, says the fees apply to the whole investment, but claims they're no big deal. As long as you are happy with this return, you, you right. don't have to worry about I the see. Okay. At Scotia... There hasn't been any discussion about advice. Net per, they only take it out of the gains. So let's say if your 50000 grows to 55000 that 5000 gain extension, that's where they take the 2% out of it. I'm not too sure how they calculate it. So, Sandy, your head was literally in your hands. Oh, it's so bad. Completely agree here with Sandy. Um, you know, the, what happens is the turnover rate in in the advisor channel, in the offices, in your typical bank branch, uh, you've been in there for like six months, you're a teller, you take this course, all of a sudden you're selling mutual funds. You do not have the experience to be giving anybody advice on anything. Um, and like I said, like this is like a week long course you have to get like 60% or something on the exam. It takes like an hour. I don't know. To all of a sudden be talking to people about, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Uh, what? Duck Conacher is a consumer advocate who's kept an eye on the banks for decades. His take on what we've seen? They're not only getting bad advice, they're getting illegal advice. He's talking about clauses in the Bank Act that require banks to not take advantage of customers and offer appropriate products and services. So what we documented, you say, is breaking the law? Yes. But unfortunately, the banks own us, so we can't do anything without them, so they're never going to agree to changing these things that are going to hurt their profits, even though we all need them to. All five banks declined our request for an interview pointed us to the Canadian Bankers Association. In a statement, it says our findings do not reflect the experience millions of Canadians have every day at the banks. They add that a more formal analysis of the client's needs is expected to be performed when moving from an initial conversation to establishing an investment. The agency just needs to follow Law Enforcement 101, which means you're doing regular unannounced inspections when you catch violations. Ultimately, the buck stops with Finance Minister Christia Freeland. For weeks, we've requested an interview, but her office says no. We learned she's attending this mining conference in Toronto. So, we try again in person. Minister Freeland, this is CBC Marketplace. We're hoping to speak to you about a story we're doing about sales pressure within the banks. We keep trying. Mr. Freeland, do you have a moment to speak with CBC Marketplace? We've been, we've been documenting sales pressure within the banks. We found bank employees giving inaccurate advice. But no luck. Later, her office sends a statement saying the government has zero tolerance for banks offering misleading information or inappropriate financial services. And they say they've taken action, added consumer protections to the Bank Act. Hmm, those protections were in place during our hidden camera test. So... Until consumers are better protected, our expert has this message. Just do a little bit of research into the evidence of good, sound financial advice, and then you're going to be hearing these pitches with very different ears. That's what I want people to do. Sandy's absolutely right. I mean, the whole point of this channel and, you know, anyone else that's out there uh, is just to give a higher level of financial education or literacy to people and and if we can make a little bit of, of money uh by running decent business shopping, then uh, but i'm not going alone 
then that's great. Uh, that's all we're trying to do. I mean, unfortunately, you know, for me, sort of fighting against these giant corporations takes a heavy toll on me because, you know, it's sort of like David versus Goliath and, and uh, I hate it because they have all these tools and resources to sort of hurt us and, and they have hurt me many times over the years uh, just with, with changes that they've been able to make that, you know, I couldn't do anything about. So uh, find out more, ask the right questions. Um, make sure that you're working with somebody that you trust and that, you know, you guys' values align and you're really wanting to listen to them and, and their advice and, and you're working together. It should be a good relationship. Not everybody, no matter what, if their intentions are good or, or perfect working together. So that's also a big part of it too. So just uh, be careful out there. Watch for what you're looking for. And if you want a second opinion, we're always here and there's tons of other uh, good guys and girls out there just trying to do the right thing because it's not like I have anything bad to say about these uh, bank employees whatsoever. They're just doing their job. Uh, it doesn't make them bad people. Uh, it doesn't make them bad advisors. It just means that they're working for a company that doesn't have your best interests at heart, uh, and a lot of us do. So that's basically it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Love to hear what you think in the comments, and we'll chat soon. Cheers.